This video discusses in fairly general terms the types of problems Neural Tools attempts to solve and the solution method it uses to solve them. The latter topic of solution methods is quite technical, and no attempt is made here to cover the details of the neural net algorithms. If you are mathematically inclined, you can read more about these algorithms, both in general and in the way they are implemented in Neural Tools, in the Neural Tools help documentation. A neural net is similar in purpose to a regression equation, in that it tries to predict the value of a dependent variable from values of independent variables. However, it is a more general approach. First, the dependent variable can be either categorical or numeric. If it is categorical, the predictions are usually called classifications. In this case, the method tries to classify each case as being in one of two or more categories. Similarly, the independent variables can be categorical or numeric. Neural Tools allows all of these possibilities. The second distinction between neural nets and regression is that the result of a neural net analysis is not a simple equation that you can use for predictions. Instead, it is a complex calculation involving the values of the independent variables, a network structure, weights on the links of this network structure, and nonlinear transformation functions. The goal of this complex structure, as its name implies, is to mimic the way the human brain works, with signals passing through neurons and being transformed along the way. Over the past few decades, mathematicians in various fields have researched ways to build and implement neural nets, and the field is now to the point where several types of algorithms have proven successful and have been implemented in software packages. Neural Tools implements two basic types of neural nets. Its multi-layer feed-forward nets, that is MLF, are probably more well known. They consist of network structures with inputs and output nodes and one or more hidden layers of nodes. These can be used for either classification or prediction problems. Its probabilistic neural nets and generalized regression nets, that is PN slash GRN, provide another approach that often rival the MLF approach in accuracy. This is fortunate because PN slash GRN nets train much faster than MLF nets. Actually, probabilistic nets are used for classification, and generalized regression neural nets are used to predict numeric dependent variables. When they are used for classification, they provide probabilities that their classifications are the correct ones, whereas MLF nets don't provide such probabilities. Finally, if the dependent variable is numeric, Neural Tools provides a regression option. This lets you compare the results from a linear predictor to the results from a neural net. When you click the Train button on the neural net's ribbon, the drop-down in the Net Configuration tab lets you choose the type of net you want to use. It actually offers a third choice, Best Net Search. This runs PN, GRN, and MLF, the latter several times with various numbers of hidden nodes, so that you can compare the results from the different nets. However, you should be aware that the best net search can take a considerable amount of computing time. Therefore, a good strategy is to use the quick PN, GRN option first. If it produces sufficiently accurate predictions, you can quit. Otherwise, you can try MLF, or best net search and hope for improved accuracy. If you select PN GRN, there are no options. The network is set up in a fixed way. However, if you select MLF, the dialog box changes as you see. Now you can select the number of nodes, at least two, in the first hidden layer and you can choose the number of nodes, if any, in a second hidden layer. The dialog box changes in a similar way if you choose Best Net Search. However, unless you really understand the way MLF nets work, it is probably best to accept the automatic choices from Neural Tools. It is important to realize that once you choose a type of net, and then train it with a set of training data, the resulting net is stored with your file, and it can be used later on to predict or classify new data. 
This is analogous to storing the coefficients of a regression equation. But now the structure of the network, the weights on its links, and any nonlinear transformations are all stored as part of the net. To appreciate this, suppose you train a net and select the option to place the results for these particular training and testing sets in a new workbook. I will do this here for illustration, letting the net train for a few seconds. It should go longer, but I will stop it prematurely. As you can see, the results are stored in a new workbook, which I will now delete. However, the net itself is still stored in the original workbook, the one you see here. You can see it by selecting Neural Net Manager from the Utilities dropdown on the Neural Tools ribbon. There is the stored net. This trained net can then be copied to other workbooks or to a special NTF file for predicting new data in other workbooks. This is discussed more fully in the Utilities and Application Settings video in this Guided Tour series. As mentioned earlier, PNGRN nets train much faster than MLF or best net search options. For the latter two, you can change the settings in the Runtime tab of the Training dialog shown here. You can also change these settings for the PNGRN option, but it usually isn't necessary. For example, you could check the Progress option and change the default options so that the training quits sooner. In any case, as the net is being trained, you see the progress dialog that you saw earlier, and you can stop at any time if you are not seeing much progress.